Hey folks, this is Aaron the Pedantic, and today we're going to talk about what the players want from your game. This may be the most important topic that I could ever touch on when it comes to the subject of Dungeons and Dragons. I had a long discussion with a friend and player in one of my games the other night. We talked about what exactly he's hoping to get out of the first edition game that I'm running. There was a moment when he recalled from our session Monday night when one of the players was lamenting the cost of holy water. 25 gold pieces, if you're curious. I'm a cleric. I should be able to make my own holy water, they said. Should you be able to? We're going to ignore for a moment that the Dungeon Master's Guide puts it quite plainly that there is a meticulous process involved for the creation of holy water and that a cleric of at least level five is required because you need a basin and a font and you need a lot of money and you need time. The more appropriate philosophical question is, what does it mean to be a first level cleric, a first level fighter, a first level magic user? Just how low on the totem pole are we starting at? Uh, how self-sufficient should we be? How many of us are out there in the world we're playing in? This question says innumerable things about the themes we're gonna be dealing with as players in the game. What kinds of authorities do we answer to? How can we expect NPCs to react to our presence? That's just when it comes to social challenges and our growth as a character. We've also got to question the material components and how they're consumed. Is the entire vial of holy water consumed when casting bless? If not, how many uses could you get out of a vial before the thing is expended? Some of these things are spelled out in the rules. Igax clearly had designs on whether or not a first level cleric should be able to do these things, though he could always debate whether or not he adhered to the rules he wrote in practice. Uh, those which aren't spelled out in the books, and honestly, even the rules that are spelled out in the books are entirely within the realm of negotiability with your players. The big question is, what do you want to accomplish and what do they want to accomplish? My friend and I came to a consensus. When we sit at the table as players, we don't care to game the system for maximum benefit. We don't want to be handed a character with a plethora of features to exploit. We don't want to be given authorship over the setting. We don't want to be handed grand victories or asked by the DM in some meta level what we would like our rewards to be. We just want to inhabit a character that's living in a world, be that character for a little while, and face some challenges. We want to face extreme peril and see if we can overcome the odds. Generosity from the DM is going to destroy us in our fun. A good humor and impartial rulings, those are the things that we were really looking for. In my friend's case, he played a fighter in my old school essentials game. A fighter that wasn't the brightest and his stats were nothing to write home about. One of the things that my friend suggested he enjoyed about the game was how all these other adventurers' bodies kept filling up the graveyard, yet somehow his subpar fighter kept surviving. It wasn't because he played the smartest he could. He often actually subjected himself to wisdom ability checks to see if his character did the smart thing or the Dexter thing. He said there was a time he thought, wouldn't it be crazy if this mediocre dumbass happened to succeed where all these others had failed? That seems to be where he finds an immense amount of fun to be had at the table, being the character, facing the challenges, and just seeing how things play out. Having no remorse if his character meets an untimely end and he has to start all over again. My friend and I are basically the same in this interest. Fortunately for him, I was trying my damnedest to run the kind of game that I myself would love to play in. And since we have the same tastes, then that would work out really well for him. It's not the kind of game that most people these days are interested in, though. And I know this because most games that I've been a player in have left me wanting. That's part of the reason that I usually want to be the dungeon master. There's a lot of reasons, actually. I mean, I, I really enjoy the process of bringing a world to life for a group of players, keeping them engaged, managing tension, providing opportunities for them to exercise their creativity, uh, filling in the blanks as we go along because I can't prepare for everything. And, you know, just rolling with the punches and, and seeing them create their victories and, and sometimes create their own defeats. I've spent a lot of time thinking about this because I want to have the opportunity to enjoy myself as a player more, and I don't want people to sit at my table grumbling to themselves about how I'm running things and not saying anything. Very few people actually will complain when they spend a half hour, an hour, two to three hours bored out of their minds because the table was emphasizing a manner of play that only one person was actually interested in. So rather than bringing it up, they check out mentally until something interesting to them presents itself. I know this because I've done it.
maybe the best thing for me to do is to just be open about what I want to do and spend my time doing whenever we're playing. How much time do I want to spend shopping? Do I think that romancing NPCs is a meaningful way to play or PCs for that matter? Should we fade to black if they get freaky? How much challenge do I want to face in the game? How much would I be upset if my character was mercilessly slaughtered? Would I be upset if my character wasn't mercilessly slaughtered? How important do I want my character to be in the world to begin with? How much do I want to see this change as we play? Would I ever be interested in my character being pivotal to some kind of plot point? There are a multitude of ways that people enjoy the game. I could go into a whole diatribe about the stuff that I like being great and the stuff that you like being terrible and I'm virtuous and you're bad and all that kind of stuff. But I, I don't honestly believe any of that. I just believe we have different preferences and that's fine. Some people enjoy cracking commentary and watching things unfold. Some people want to be actors and deliver a performance. Some people want to outgame the system, be the strongest character, and outsmart the DM at every turn with their brilliant tactics. I was recently listening to Matthew Colville's Chain of Acheron campaign diaries, in which he did something that I've always found to be kind of insufferable as a player. He conspired with one of the players, giving that player cues in advance so that they could deliver an extremely dramatic moment. Or there could be some contrived reason that someone's character is going to bite it so that they can play a new character and they swear they're going to enjoy this character this time. I bring this up because while I wouldn't have wanted to be that player, I know damn well that the people I play 5th edition with love those kinds of prescripted, dra prescripted dramatic moments. I, I can talk, I swear. I I've done these moments for them before. That's how I know they enjoy it. And ultimately, if they tell me they enjoy this kind of play, I'll probably do it for them again. I've learned that I don't have to want to play in the kind of game that I run for me to have a good time running it. If they have a good time playing, I have fun running it. But I can't assume that they're having fun just because they're smiling in the end. I've endured a lot of sessions and just continued smiling in the end. I think I'm going to keep smiling in the games that I play in, but I'm going to be more vocal inquiring about what everyone wants the game to be. There's a solid chance that I'll endure a game I'm not wild about because I enjoy spending time with the people in the group. But if I can get them to talk about what the game is, the way that they see it, perhaps I can try to find what I can really enjoy in the game, not in spite of what it is, but for what it is. Maybe I'll stop moping about the lack of dungeons and challenge and all this kind of stuff and start doing the voice, being dramatic and reveling in the plot line. Really anything is better than just checking out and wasting my time and smiling at the end of the game. So I really want to just ask you, what do the players want from your game and are you giving it to them? That's pretty much it for this video. I think I'd like to delve deeper into this topic, but for now I'd like to hear what you have to say. Would you get pissed off if a player tried to elicit this kind of feedback from the group? Would you change the way you run your games to appease the table if they brought up some criticism? Is it better to balance the game so people of different tastes have fun? Or should you try to recruit players that all have roughly the same interests to begin with? I'm looking forward to comments. Take it easy, folks. Like, share, and subscribe, etc. Peace out.